generally speaking, I think that rice is at its very best when it's been pressed into service as a delivery device for some wonderful curry. Don't get me wrong, I've had my share of rice dishes over the years. I mean, you pretty much throw rice and anything else with it into a big frying pan, fry it up, and you've got yourself a meal. And fried rice has definitely been a part of my diet growing up over the years. I mean, my mom made it for me when I was a kid, and my local Chinese restaurants made it for me when I was an adult. But today we're doing a pilaf, and a pilaf is a bit different from all that. And I've had pilafs before. I think. Um, obviously, if I did, it wasn't that memorable, or was probably out of a box. My mind probably just threw it into that whole bunch of stuff mixed with rice fried up and called a meal category. So today we're going to go with this recipe and uh, see if it's a little bit more memorable than the ones I may or may not have had in the past. Well, I have to say that uh, it might not be the largest number of ingredients that we've used so far. Um, it's definitely the most comfortable, <laughs> but, um, and let me just point out the thing on this one, so on the pilaf, he does talk, on the episode, he does talk about using saffron, and he gives a whole bunch of details on it, and it was not the easiest thing to find, I'll tell you that much. Um, and this little package here cost about five bucks, so it's not too bad. And, you know, we're steeping it in the water here. It's coming out with that nice golden color. Um, hopefully this will all work out. We'll see. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff, uh, but it should come together pretty easily. I hope. Okay, um, we got the oven. Uh, <laughs> we got the oven. Uh, Preheating, ready to go. We'll start throwing in the vegetables and get frying. Red pepper and onion. A little bit of salt. Again, with the pinch method of measuring, I don't actually know. Because let's face it. My pinch is going to be a lot different than your pinch. Crashing your head, I'm crying. So what kind of pinch would you prefer? Let's go with that. All right, this is just supposed to be a sweat. So a few minutes at this, which apparently just means we just cook on low till the onions turn nice and translucent. And then we have the next bit. All right, I uh, guess we can consider that sweated fully. Had a nice workout, sweating a little bit. Yeah, who hasn't made that joke about sweating before? Okay, uh, see, you cut that, now nah, leave that in, it's wonderful. Uh, yes, sweated, bring the heat to medium. And add the rice, just to say, we are going to be pouring in some generally unwashed rice into my pan of wonderfully sweated vegetables. Now, the book says that unless the rice is seriously dirty and dusty, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to take the time to clean it off, in fact. So I didn't. But this is something I've run into before in different situations. Some people just think that a little dirt is a little okay. But why? All right, uh, we're just gonna stir this in for a few minutes until you smell nuts, apparently. Is it just me or does Mr. Brown always talk about cooking something until it smells nutty? Because that does not seem like a very scientific way to judge doneness. I mean, how nutty is nutty enough? Okay, it's been a few minutes and I am starting to smell some, I am, Smelling, it, it smells nutty. The dish, not really. I'm, good laws, I can't speak into a camera, can I? Okay, anyway, point is, rice is all coated, looks good. We cooked through, so now it's time to add in the liquids. 
Fighting goes. Brought. And the saffron, which has made a really nice golden liquid, golden color. I kind of feel like I have to say more about using saffron for the first time, and probably the last time, right about now. But other than the trouble that I had to go through to find it, I really got nothing to add. I just feel like I should since Mr. Brown took so much time on it on the show. Got a bunch of salt. Orange. And a couple of babies. And make sure it's not sticking to the bottom of the pan. And then we start a boiling. Okay, here's the thing. This bring to a boil. I see bubbles. We're boiling. I mean, does that mean we've been brought to a boil? Is that good enough? Or am I supposed to let this boil for a while? Because apparently there is, or at least should be, a fine line between bringing to a boil and boiled. But is it still supposed to smell nutty? What I'm trying to say is that when you're learning cooking by just following recipes like this, a little more exactitude could be a little helpful. That's good. We'll let it boil as long as it takes two. What a cloth. Kill the heat, it says. We're gonna call that boiled. We have our wet towel. Um, okay, again, do I wait for it to stop boiling? Let's wait for it to stop boiling. Yeah, kill the heat, scatter the bees. Okay, let's just say in the instruction, in the instructions in the recipe, it just says kill the heat and then scatter the peas on top of the rice. I don't actually see the rice yet, so I'm still questioning that. Do I let this boil down till you see the rice? Because I get the feeling we're supposed to let the oven do that. Okay, screw it. We're doing this. I'm just putting the peas on top, because I've frozen anyway. I could use a little bit of extra cooking. Then. Let's take a little bit from the heat for this. And cover with the towel. Lid over the towel. Nice and secure, hopefully. And fold it up. Let's do that by corners instead of by sides. How are we feeling about that? Good, good. In the oven. Nope. For 15 minutes. <laughs> it's too big for my oven. This will take just a sec. But it's going in the oven. For future reference, always check that kind of thing before you start filming. Okay, so that was officially a thing. I did not plan on the lid being too uh, tall for my oven. So we just lowered the middle rack. Hopefully that doesn't affect cook time too much, but for now it's 15 minutes in the oven and timer, not cook time. And then hopefully we'll see how that turns out. Okay, uh, guess it's just clean up till then. Right, 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 okay. It's 15 minutes up. The bee lock comes out. Now, nice. Unfortunately, we don't get to see what it looks like yet. We're supposed to leave the lid on for another 15 minutes and hope for the best. Okay, <laughs> I can go over my bell, but there it is. I now get to see um, 
if it's still a liquidy mess, it's still very hot. Or if we get an actual peel off out of this. And the answer is. One thing, yeah. That is a magnetic climactic. Yay. It's, um, not at that, I'm, I'm surprised. Okay, not surprised, of course. I totally knew this was going to work out. Having faith after all in the recipe. And that guy comes out. And that guy's out. This guy's out. Um, it looks all right. Looking. <laughs> it's okay. I took myself down from an all right to an okay just there. But I still have to say that this application is by far the most colorful and best looking application that I've done so far. Let's get it into here. And some raisins. It's got raisins in it. And that's really nice, light, fluffy. All right. Let's uh, get this to the table and try it out. We have what sure looks and smells like. I was going to say it looks and smells like pilaf, but honestly, this is my first pilaf thing. Created. Uh, I mean, outside of the stuff in the box. Um, so, well, let's see, we're gonna see now if, you know, we're just going off of putting it in, going following the instructions carefully. We'll see if the rice is properly cooked, what everything tastes like. You can really taste the saffron. Just kidding, I don't even know what that saffron should taste like, but on the whole, this is pretty good. It's a little, the rice is not quite as, as soft as I would have hoped. And again, I don't know if that's recipe or me or what, but it is good. It is, it's a meal in itself. That's all right. Um, the problem is, the problem is that even though this was technically a simple and easy recipe, it was still really time consuming. And while it was certainly good and edible, flavorful might not be the word I would use to describe it. Then again, maybe just all the boxed rice dishes I've had over the years have deadened my ability to taste something when it's using more natural ingredients. Who knows? Anyway, point is, if you're not gonna get that much flavor out of it, is it worth putting that much time into it? Now, after having said all that, I did discover after filming the kitchen bit that this peel-off does in fact make a wonderful, wonderful delivery device for a good Japanese curry. Just saying, really good. But then again, I have been known to put curry on Frosted Flakes, so take that recommendation for whatever you will. And if you do want to see the uh, results of said curry pilaf combo, uh, those will be in the photos after the video and on my Instagram if you're to check, be sure to check that out. So the recipe turned out all right. Uh, as far as I know, I did everything correctly, so that means further on this scale. But again, it just did not have a ton of flavor. 
So I'm not gonna put it up too high. I think right in that vicinity. Anyway, that should do it for this week then. Uh, come back again next week as we continue to work our way through every good each recipe ever. Thanks. Well, with Mountain Dew, though.